Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 28th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today is taking a look at an obfuscated bash script that a reader found on a compromised QNAP storage device. These type of storage devices are always in the crosshairs of attackers because typically there's quite a bit of data on them, also some reasonable processing power for crypto coin mining. And then of course they tend to be one of these devices that are often forgotten when it comes to patching. Also not necessarily that easy to patch because you have to reboot the device, which then breaks any links of any shared files or so that uh, may be in use on the device. Now, one thing that makes this script a little bit special is that it's actually obfuscated. In many cases, scripts uh, copied to these devices are not obfuscated. So reverse analysis is usually not all that difficult. Now, in the end, what this particular script is doing is pretty standard. It's setting up backdoors. It's also setting up a backdoor admin account and then does some brute forcing. Not 100% clear how this particular script ended up on the device as in what vulnerability was used to copy it, but often it's just a simple SH password or a vulnerability in one of the many web applications that are typically running on these devices. Over the last couple of years, systems like Let's Encrypt have substantially lowered the bar needed to get an HTTPS website. And of course, that not only made it easier for the good guys to set up HTTPS, but also for the bad guys. So it's not only the majority of good websites that are taking advantage of HTTPS, but also about half of phishing sites, according to Fish Labs, are now taking advantage of HTTPS. This of of course, uh, puts into question the advice uh, to consider a site safe if it's using HTTPS. The only thing HTTPS does is it encrypts the content and it does authenticate that you are connecting to the correct domain, but it doesn't protect you from typos. It doesn't protect you from phishing. So you still have to be careful which sites you visit. Now, extended validation certificates, we're supposed to address this a little bit, but according to some, they actually sort of made it worse, even though there is still a substantial at least money hurdle in obtaining an extended validation certificate. And talking about legacy protocols, looks like FTP file transfer protocol support is going to disappear from popular browsers. Both Chrome and Firefox indicated that they may remove support for FTP in future versions. FTP, of course, used to be a very popular protocol in order to download large files, but has been almost entirely replaced by HTTP now. A lot of Linux distributions no longer offer mirrors via FTP, but only HTTP. Also, most notable kernel.org, the maintainers of the Linux kernels, no longer offer an FTP server. According to statistics collected by Chrome over seven days, only 0.1 to 0.2 percent of users actually use FTP URLs. And of course, it's very possible that they could have accomplished the same thing without FTP. So if you're still using FTP servers, if you're still operating FTP servers, you may want to think about how you will decommission them and how you may move the content over to HTTP if you don't already offer that as an option. And the California wildfires apparently are being used in some somewhat targeted email scams. Not sure if I would quite qualify them as business email compromise scams, but essentially what's happening here is that these emails appear to come from the CEO of a company and they're asking to issue Google gift cards in order to support clients that are stuck in these wildfires. In the particular email published here by Gary, the attacker asked for four times $500 in gift cards. Now, $500, quite a bit of money for a gift card, but probably not that terribly unusual to support a good client with some help during a crisis like these wildfires. We haven't 
haven't seen anything widespread like this and this particular event looks more targeted given that it came or tried to impersonate the CEO of the company. But if you run into anything like us, uh, I would appreciate a copy of any emails like this. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.